Greetings from Bulgaria, my friends. You know what's coming this Saturday. Even if you don't, me and my friend Mox are going to explain to you in the next few minutes what the Extra Life 2016 will be about and what my and the team role will be. Hey, Mox. Hey, well, thank you for having me here today. Thank you very much for agreeing to explain to my audience very quickly and briefly what this list that we are seeing on the screen is about, what kind of events will be part of the Extra Life 2016, and how people can join. Let's quickly go over the list. We have a bunch of events listed. The event is scheduled for November 5th, that's Saturday, and it's going to run for about 12 hours for those who can survive the total length. Couple brief words, what exactly is Extra Life? And who is it helping? Extra Life is a charity that was started by gamers to help kids. Uh, the founder uh, lost the, uh, his daughter to a childhood illness and uh, thought, you know, well, look, is there has to be a way that gamers who don't really run marathons, who don't, you know, um, do 10K runs, things like that, that they can do something to help kids. And they decided to start this charity that where gamers can do what they do, which is play games and get people to, to donate to the to the cause through their efforts of raising awareness and it will help children in hospitals in north america and every last penny that people are donating is going to support uh, ill or sick kids exactly exactly uh last year we had uh, on passionately casual we had a, a one of the vice chairs of the orange county extra life this year on an interview and he said that that their efforts last year um got a whole bunch of equipment for the children's hospitals in the in the southern california area and it was really neat to hear that direct effect that they had that's really impressive let's talk very briefly and quickly about the events one by one first we have an icebreaker Sure. Yeah. The icebreaker is just uh, to get people together, give people a chance to trickle in. You know, as well as I do, that uh, nobody arrives or not everyone arrives exactly at the start. So we give people, you know, just a short time to gather, um, you know, socialize and kind of, you know, get set up and ready to go to start our day's events. Just a gathering party. And then we have the next one called Tonton Mount and Townlet Pet. Yeah, we did this last year as well. It's a great event on Hoth. Uh, we travel around uh, to the various nests, lure out some some tauntauns, defend the uh, the nest from the the evil. Uh, I was about to call them rancors. The what are they? The wampas uh, will come and uh, try to attack the the tauntauns. We defeat them, and if we get enough of them, we can get some some tauntaun mounts for our our group, and then the tauntlet pet. Uh, just go to a certain area and lure out the pets and protect them uh, and take them as our pets and love them and hug them and all that stuff. Why do we have Musku in space? What exactly is the Star Wars The Old Republic community manager going to do in space? Well, we all have wanted to launch him out in airlock, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is uh, actually a GSF event. We uh, we usually include some kind of PvP event in our uh, marathon. So this year we decided that we were going to take the tunes that we have leveled the previous two events uh, on the imp side and the pub side. We all have Musco tunes uh, that look like Eric Musco because he's a great guy. Uh, and so we wanted to take those now and put them into the GSF event. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And for those folks who didn't join us in the June live event, the characters all resembling Musco and featuring Musco in the title in some form were leveled up as part of another game that we actually had last summer in the warm-up event for the real Extra Life this November. What's next? World bosses. Yeah, just travel around, work on the world bosses, maybe help some people to finish off that, that last DVL uh, event that they need to do. So we're going to start off with the Zios world boss and uh, then just travel around, look for other world bosses that are up and get people some achievements and some, you know, just some fun. Okay, we're not planning to annoy other people farming their own bosses. Absolutely not. You know, so we go and somebody is there already fighting it, we'll move on. There, there's plenty of world bosses to fight. I see people will get a chance to get yet another HK companion in case they are not filled through the roof with HKs already. Exactly. Um, last year we did it on the Imperial side. This year we're going to do it on the pub side. Uh, this is one of those really time-consuming missions that if you do it alone is a real pain in the neck to do all that, that searching with that seismograph thing they give you. So we decided that you know if we, if we have 15, 20, 30 people all looking on the planet for those parts, it will go much, much quicker. So that is, uh, you know, the reason for that we're doing that. And that is what I expect to be my favorite game. 
Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Yeah. Um, this is a game that I kind of have uh, taken under my wing. I, I did it. Uh, we did it two years ago uh, on Tatooine, and this uh, we're going to do it this year again. Actually, we're going to be back again on um, uh, Tython uh, on the pub side, and uh, not Tython. I apologize. I said there you go. Um, Taris. I had the T right, but that was it. Um, yeah, so I on... knew it's going to be Taris, but I've just gotten my hopes up when you said Titan because we know <laughs> how much everybody loves Tar- Taris. Yeah, uh, Taris is good because it's got, you know, just a, a, a good, uh, you know, uh, range of places for me to hide. I will hide. Uh, everybody will know the planet that I'm on, but not exactly where I am. I will be visible. I won't be like hiding like in like in an object or something so you can't find me. I will be very visible so that you can you can find me. But the object is you have this whole planet and and I will give clues about every 10 minutes or so. I will give a clue that will narrow it down. Right. Of course, we don't expect from our team captain to be lying, do we? And cheating. Never. So how can the price be wrong? (laughs) <laughs> the price can be very wrong. Uh, last year, we did uh, Family Feud, which is another American game show. Uh, this year, we decided to do The Price is Right, which is um, all centered around uh, various prizes and, and things that you can get in-game. Uh, and basically, you, you're, there, are, there, there are different games that you play in order to try to win those prizes. I think um, JT and I wrapped it up last night, as far as all the planning. Um, the total amount of prizes that we're giving away is just about 50 million credits. Oh, wow. So there are lots of prizes, vehicles, uh, decorations, uh, all sorts of things that you can get. Um, so we're going to make that a really good time. 15 million credits. No, wow. 50, five, zero. What? Okay. <laughs> half, half of 100 million. Yeah, 50 million. I'm starting to shake a little bit. <laughs> How many datacrons do you think we will be able to find in one hour? That depends on how many of my officers get their butts into place in the spot. <laughs> We're going to do summons to these. So the idea is going to be to try to nail through as many as we can. Generally, we we have in the past, um, and we've gotten away from it, we used to have a Datacron day each month where we would go and do like two or three planets worth. Um, so we've gotten away from it. So I decided, you know, well, let, let's let's get back to it, but let's try to knock them all out as or not all, but as many as we can. So we're going to start at the at the higher end stuff. We do have um, the ones that are on the plus 10 um, to presence and plus 10 endurance that are on mm-hmm. uh, McKeb. Uh, we got people in position for that. And then I'd like to work on the higher end plans. I think those are the ones that people are missing. Like the, there, there's like some really hard ones on Hoth. There's there's really challenging ones on Corellia. So I'd like to get those ones. The plus 10 endurance data crown on Mocab. I think many, many people will be forever grateful to you for doing yeah. that. Yeah. So we're going to try to knock out as many as we can. And I believe the last two events are pretty much self-explanatory. But just tell us, what does it mean to know your planet? Uh, it's just like a little trivia contest uh for some some prizes uh where you just basically will be will hear a description of a planet and um it may be something obscure it may be something very obvious but the idea is to try the first person to guess the planet wins uh and then we will move the ship to that planet so we can all look at it and you know, kind of like travel around and kind of see the cool things that the ships can do as far as getting moved around one thing that we didn't mention the starting hour obviously it says eight in the morning which time zone is this that's Pacific time zone, which is the same time as Harbinger server. One last thing we didn't mention was uh, the dance party will also be um, co-streamed with RadioFree.org. Uh, oh, nice. Just like the last one. Exactly. So they will be uh, you know, providing the, the music for that. So come out and, and participate if you can't. Uh, Volk will have a link to donate. That's the most important thing is that we get, you know, raise some money to help these kids. There will be links before and during the event and probably after the event. I will be posting my and the team link left and right. We are going to see all of you guys live Saturday afternoon or maybe Saturday morning, depending on where you live. I hope we're all going to enjoy this event together and make it even better than last year's.